You know, it's really crazy. I don't know if you guys know this about our house, but if you come in here wanting children, you will have children. And I mean that in the most honorable way, most respectful way. But we have had, we've had, Paul, am I right? We've had, it, we've had doctors declare that you'll never have children, and Paul and Brenda decided to have four. Five. Yeah, we do have five. Two daughters and three boys, and one is, uh, is waiting, can't wait to meet us. And, um, you know, Richard and Penny, they were told they weren't supposed to have children, and I don't know when they're going to stop having <laughs> children. It's just one of those, it's just one of those, isn't that a beautiful when reports in the natural are contrary to the reports that he has planned, he wins. Every, sing, every single time, you know, he wins. And I just, I'm really, I'm glad that I'm actually, um, I'm glad that I'm actually becoming a believer. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I'm actually becoming a believer, but I'm also glad that I'm actually be becoming a confessor. See, I don't think anything, anything he starts with, he finishes the same way. And he said this. He said, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, then forgiveness of sins deliverance and healing takes place. It's, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. The word for salvation there is sozo. The word sozo actually means that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be healed. Are you? If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be delivered from things that torment you. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you're forgiven. You are a brand new creation. Isn't that good? So I, I, I just, whenever something goes wrong, I'm learning, I'm learning that, it, that, that it's not God's fault that anything could go wrong. He says it this way. He says, am I like a man that I should lie? It's not in his nature to lie. It's not in his nature to fail. It's not, it, 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 he would have to step out of himself to fail. Well, how do I know that? Because the Bible says that God is love, and the Bible says that love never fails. Therefore, God never fails. Yes. But this crazy thing that I'm, I'm just beginning to walk in is, I am supposed to be made in his image, which I'm beginning to believe that I actually am. I am believing that God is not mad at me, he's not angry at me, he's not trying to get even with me, and he's not trying to take out his bad day on me. Let me ask you this, have you ever thought about the fact that God never acts outside of the fruit of the Spirit. There actually is a plan to what I'm saying today. See, I, I'm gonna talk about something that I'm just, God bless you. I'm gonna talk about something that I have, I'm probably an expert on. I'm an expert on a few things. This one I feel like I'm an expert on. It's not guitar playing. <laughs> you could tell that this morning. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jacob. I am, I'm in, I'm at 52 years old. I'm in the process right now of 
figuring out the difference, learning the difference between anger and assertiveness. Passion and power and control and manipulation. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's like, it's a big, big deal. In fact, I've gotta, I've gotta tell you, I don't, know how, I don't know how this is for you guys. I'm just gonna say for me that anger has been the number one issue of destroying relationships in my life, hurting relationships in my life. It's not that that's all I know, but I'll say this, that out of everything that I've done wrong, anger has had the greatest impact when it is done negatively. See, I, I've, 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 I've had a wrong, I don't know, and again, I don't know about you guys, but I've, but I've had a wrong definition of anger. How many know that God gets angry? The Bible says God gets angry. The problem is, is his anger never stops out of his character. And part of his character is self-control because that's a fruit of the spirit, right? God is never out of control. Would everybody agree with that? Are we okay with that? So that when God gets angry, he's not going out of control to try to do something to us to try to hurt us. However, in humanity, we have equated being out of control and anger as being the same thing, and they are not. Anger is an emotion, and the Bible's very clear that when you get angry, don't sin. But yet there's a church that's become complacent for fear of becoming angry when the reality is it's okay to be moved with anger, with emotion that, that rises up in you as long as you don't move into sin because that anger can actually produce an assertiveness that is powerful as long as you keep it righteous. Am I making sense? There's things that anger me. Ready? There, there's some things. Anybody know what just got passed this week? Yeah. That angers me. But you know that a spiritual warrior reserves his anger for the true enemy. I love every single person that lives in sexual immorality. I love every single person that lives in sexual immorality. Every single person. If you're living with somebody and you're not married, there's no judgment coming from me. There's nothing but love coming from me. However, there's no judgment coming from me, but you won't get any agreement either. But you don't ha I don't have to agree with your life standard, with your convictions, with your opinions to love you, as the Bible says, unconditionally. I... I um somebody somebody said you know Pastor Scott will you will you will you marry a gay couple when they come to you and I said I can't they said why because that's not marriage what do you mean it's not marriage well God is the one who instituted marriage He's the one who created the covenant He said it's one man and one woman so you can call it something else they said well, what are you going to do I said I'm going to say let uh, let give unto Caesar what's Caesar's and give unto God's what's God's. But this isn't something you can give to God that God institute. You can call it marriage. You can call it a license, and the state's okay with it. And that's okay that we're tweeting this. This is all within, this is all within uh, truth, right? But my opinion about two people who are in a same sex doesn't change the fact that I love them. I love people who gossip. I love people who are ignorant. Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But can I tell you something? The reason we're having these issues in our country is because we have these issues in our country, not for a, because there's so much sin in our country. We have these issues in our country because we have a lack of righteousness in our country. See, because can I tell you something? Can I just, as straight as I can be? No pun intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I actually am, I'm just saying, okay. Um, right, honey, tell them, that's right, right? Watch this, though. Watch. Watch this. I got new sneakers. I did. I did get new sneakers. Everybody watching? Watch this. Watch this. Where, Dave? Anybody have a problem with that? I don't. Okay, Dave, 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 might, Dave might have a problem. Dave might have a problem. Hey, I, I, met, 
I met a guy down in Harrisburg and uh, a pastor down there, and I went up and I kissed him right on top of the head, a senior leader down there, and, he's, and he looked at me. And he, I had just prayed over him, and I just, and I just kissed him on top of the head. And I said, and uh, he goes, no, I've never had anybody do that to me before. And I go, yes, you have, just now. But I, listen, greet each other with a holy kiss. Find nothing impure inside of you. Like, I, 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 right? no problem with my manhood, zero. I know who I am, okay? I'm not going to restrict the love towards somebody, an individual, a child. I just want to hug you. I just want to hug you. I just want to hug you. Okay. See, what's happening is the enemy wants to allow fear to dismantle what God wants to release by faith. Can I tell you something? Darkness does not scare me. Not even a little. But the reason that darkness has to flee is because light comes into the room. Now, I'm going to tell you something with regards to, the, see, here's the deal. If Lisa and I, if our marriage was in such a way, optimum, that we were living in this place of abundance, fully living, fully surrendered to God, fully in our marriage, and it was being demonstrated, guess what happens to people who want to get married? They want a marriage like ours. Can I tell you something? The reason, here's the deal, and here, here, I'm just telling you straight up the way it is. Here's the, here's the reality. The reason that people want an alternative to marriage is because they've seen marriage as not working, including in the church. But if they saw something, something attractive, see, there's everything about Jesus answers the desires of the nation. But the problem is Jesus isn't being seen. I want Jesus seen in me. I want Jesus seen in our marriage. I want Jesus seen in my family. Why? Because that's the best chance there's gonna be more marriages and more families that look like me. I can't make people look like me because if I try to make people look like me, they'll never wanna be like me. But I can invite them into a lifestyle that is righteous, that is holy, if I'm living a lifestyle that is righteous and holy. Making sense? We've got to start changing culture in order for culture to change instead of condemning culture that's not changing to be like us because the culture doesn't want to be like us because we're not lifting Jesus to the highest place. We're telling everybody what we don't agree with and telling them what we're for. What am I for? I'm for him. I'm for him. Well, Pastor Scott, does that mean you don't tell people when you're against something? I'm saying, I'd really just soon do this. I'd sooner start calling life out of people. I'd start, 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 start telling people who they are, what their identity was, that God didn't make any mistakes, that he made them perfect and wonderful. Start calling them into who they really are rather than trying to dictate their wrongness. What I have found about God is he's perfect in all of his ways. So since he's perfect, I'm finding, I'm finding, he's perfect in all of his ways. So I've, I've, I've thought about this this week quite a bit. I said, Scott, you know, Scott, I said yes. And when you start talking to yourself, you're in trouble. You know that, right? But not just when you talk to yourself, you're in trouble. It's when you answer yourself talking to yourself. That's when you're really in trouble. You found, you found, but I, so I'm doing that now. And, I, and I'm like, and I'm like um, yes, Scott. And I said, well, I think, Scott, that you probably ought to do the things that you're supposed to do and let God do the things he's supposed to do. Has, has, I have friends, great friends, that when I read what they post on Facebook, I don't want to be like them. Right. Arguing, slamming people. What about if we do what we're supposed to do? Love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and love each other. Right? And then let the Holy Spirit do what he does really good, convict hearts. See, I feel like when I try to do the Holy Spirit's job of convicting people, I fail. But when I love the way that I'm designed to love, the way I've been wired up to love, the way I've been wired up to represent the Father, then the Holy Spirit has the best opportunity to do the convicting. The only thing I found is that, you know, I don't have to judge people. That's not my assignment. But when I'm in the place, because God does it perfectly. When God judges somebody, he does it perfectly. So why would I want me to judge who I'll, I'll judge imperfectly? I want to allow him to judge and let him be the perfect one in the judgment. And I never want to move into the place of accusation because when I accuse people or accuse the brethren, I've actually moved into the area of the enemy. Oh, please don't hear this wrong. Please don't hear this wrong. Please hear it. 
uh, completely appropriately. How many have ever used the word, I'm only human? Anybody ever, I'm only human. Sorry, I'm only, how many know that every time we fail, we use the words, well, I'm only human? Yes? Can I tell you something? If you're born again, you're not human. You are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That's your potential. When the Bible says, be angry and don't sin, guess what you're able to do? You're, a, you're, you're able to be angry and not sin. You're able to not sin. You're able to not sin. Why? Because you're a brand new creation. And what we do is, we approve sinning when we say we're only human. Oh, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you were a sinner saved by grace, but actually you are a son of God. You're a saint of the most high God. You're a king and a priest of the most high God. You were a sinner, you were lost, but now you're found. Why would a found person want to be lost? Why, was a, why would a blind person who got their sight want to be blind again? Are you tracking with me? What we do is we say we want to be human. So, so here's, I'm just going to tell you what was said to me in our conversation, what was impressed upon me, depending on what, you know, what background you have, by the Lord. He said to me, he said, Scott, I don't want you to be human. And I'm like, okay, where are you going with this? He said, because, Scott, he goes, when you're human, you don't understand. When you're being human, this one's an ouchie, you're actually being demonic. I said, I haven't seen my head spin around and no green pea soup has come out of my mouth. I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, when you move into flesh, Scott, you're moving outside of your identity. You were born again. How? I didn't enter back into my mother's womb? That's gross. I was born of the spirit, right? Born of the spirit. I'm born again. I'm born from above. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm a brand new creation. The world's never seen me. <laughs> The world's never seen you. We're a brand new creation. We're not in the animal kingdom. You know, we're, we're not in this kingdom. We are in kingdom of God. We're a brand new, we're, we're sojourners. We're, we're just, we're aliens to this land. We're UFOs. If you're flying anyways. So therefore, I don't have to, when I, when I move in, when I, when I, the, the connection I want to make here, when I move in, to being just human, what I'm actually doing is I'm coming into agreement with a spirit that's not Christ. So a spirit that's not Christ is the antichrist. So when I'm not operating as I should in Christ, then I'm actually operating in the antichrist, which is demonic. So what that did for me, I don't know about for you, but when I move in, when I move out of being assertive when I move out of being powerful in God's kingdom and I move into anger, now it's got a new twist to it. Scott, you're being demonic. Well, Pastor Scott, that's just not right. I don't believe I can act demonic. I have the spirit of Christ living inside me. Yeah, how about Peter? When Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. When I'm operating under the, the wrong spirit other than Holy Spirit, then I'm yielding to and I'm obeying the wrong spirit, which means I'm coming into agreement with the wrong spirit, which means I'm making the wrong spirit powerful and has authority in my life. I, I don't want the enemy having authority in my life. And guess who, what father I'm representing when I operate under the wrong spirit. I'm, I'm representing the father of lies, not the father of lights. You tracking with me? So that takes on a whole new thing. Like I don't, listen, I, 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 have, I have had conversations in the last two or three weeks with friends where it has gotten heated, it has gotten intense, and I've moved into anger with them. And when I moved into anger with them, I'm just, I'm just being, I know you guys don't do this kind of stuff, it's just me, but when I moved into anger with them, and I hope it is true, I hope none of you do, but when I moved into anger in that place, I literally felt myself step out of my own identity, and I actually, you, it almost, you, you almost feel like you're like insane for the moment. It, almost like you move into this thing, like, like and, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's, what it is, it's you move into a place, you move from self-control into no control. And you say things that you don't want to say, and you do things that you don't want to do, and then you, wait, like, can I tell you something? And then you reap the benefits of the things that the enemy wanted to sow into your life. 
We've got to stop this insanity of thinking that we can do whatever we want and that we can live on a grace on the other side of it that fixes everything. Thank God for grace, amen? I mean, thank God for grace. But, but can I tell you something? There were some things that, that, that leaders in Israel, there's things that King David couldn't do. There's, th- there's, there's consequences to moving into the place of, of, of allowing yourself to not represent God well side of your identity and moving from assertiveness and being powerful into being angry. Can I just, can I just encourage you? Don't do it. Save, save yourself years of heartache because of relationships that deteriorate because of the fact that you want to move into anger. I said a lot of stuff. I probably should get you over here to the word because I, the thing that, the thing, the thing that, the thing that I, is bothering me and the thing that, that, that troubles me the most is that I, I believe this with my whole heart that he deserves to be represented well. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to, when we move, when we move into that place of anger, what happens is People think, my children think, that that's the way God is. Because why? Because I'm the flesh in the flesh representing my father. Is that making sense? And so what happens is, when I create this, this chasm between me and people, me and any relationship that I have, what I'm actually doing is I'm causing a chasm between the father and them. Does that, I, I, I'm saying this because I think we have to keep it weighty enough, we have to keep it weighty enough so that it's a strong enough deterrent that we don't ever want to go there because of the cost that not only ourselves but everybody pays around us. Let me do this. I made a few notes. Spiritual warriors are not aggressive they are assertive in a powerful way. And I, made, I wrote this down. When I am a partaker of the nature of God, then I cannot ever again get angry the way I once did. So when I step out of my identity of being made in his image into anger, right, I am not, I'm not being a spiritual warrior. And I think sometimes we think that we can motivate people and move people and fix situations in the natural, that, things that only can be done in the spiritual. But see, the Bible says that God is very slow to anger. And even when he's angry, it's momentary and it's specific. And when God's angry, it always produces good. See, because when God actually moves in that place, even when he does, it's momentary and it's specific, but what it does is it's meant for our development. See, when, when God brings discipline to a son, it, 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 it actually has to produce something in them. And the, here, when God brings discipline to a son, he actually stays with him. Um, um, he, he doesn't leave him. He, he works through it with him. He grabs him by the hand and says, I, hey, listen, you fell down. Let's fix this thing. He stays with him. And discipline actually produces or develops something in the nature of the son that he looks more like his father. Am I making sense? What we do a lot of times, it, what man will do is, is that we, we, when we move into anger, mostly we're, we're asserting this unredeemed side of us or, or this old nature that we have. And why is that? And, I'm, and I wanna tell you something. I've, I've discovered this to myself and maybe this holds true for you. But every time I move into the old nature, it's because I'm still learning the new, new nature of God. Like there's this new, new man inside of me that, I, that I've had to learn because the old man wants to keep raising up his head. 
and I've got to do the same thing as the apostle Paul did. I've got to, I've got to decide, I've got to kill that guy again today. I've got to kill that guy again today. I've got to kill that guy today. And listen, I'm talking about anger, but this could anger, but this could be in any capacity of your life. But how many times have people been abused because of anger? Well, I just got angry. How many times have we said things out of anger that we wish we didn't say? How many times, we, listen, people say out of abundance of heart the mouth speaks. I want to tell you something. I know there's times when I've been angry that I've said things that it is not on my radar. It's not in my heart heart it's not who I am but the enemy wants to empower something in us because I think one sometimes when it comes out of our mouths we start to question and maybe that's who I really am this is what anger can do to you and God says listen I don't want you to I don't want you to be on that side of what anger is and and and, and you don't have to be out of control and you don't have to say things listen anger is an emotion you're not going to be able to stop that but when you get angry don't sin Ephesians 4.26 tells us how God gets angry. It says this. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Anything more than that? Is that end? Is that it? I just... Jesus hanging on the cross... He became sin, who knew no sin, right? And then all of God's wrath, all of God's anger, all of God's judgment was taken out on whom? Jesus. So everything, did, did he pay the price once and for all? It's been completely paid. There's nothing that you have to pay for. Am I right? This isn't a trick question. There's nothing. If, listen, if there's anything that you and I have to pay for, then what Jesus paid for on that cross wasn't sufficient enough. I believe it was completely sufficient for all time, for everything that I could ever do or you could ever do, all my past, present, and future sins, for all of humanity was completely dumped upon him. He didn't just die for us, he died as us, right? So since that, and all the wrath and anger of God, can I just tell you something? If you can get this, if you can get this in your heart, God is not angry at you. God can't be angry at you. He can't. Why? Because all of his anger is gone. How do I know? He's timeless. He's living in eternity. Guess what? When Jesus died 2,000 years plus ago, right? We're not there. He is there. It's now. It's tomorrow. It's next week. It's in eternity. It is a finished work that is absolutely finished today, tomorrow, yesterday, and in the future because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not changing because he's, he's in eternity and it's right now. That price is every time the accuser comes, nope, paid for. You owe me, nope, paid for. You're this, nope, paid for. You're, every single time it pops up, I know it's completely paid for. It's just like it was paid for me today. But if I live in that, what happens is it doesn't, what I'm, what I'm finding is the more I believe that, the less I want to sin. You would think, oh, I'll well, so take care of just sin as much as you want. No, why? Because such a price, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging with this thing, that such a price is being paid for me that my father's not angry about me. See, angry at me, when I know that my dad's not angry with me, guess what I do? I go to him. I go to him. Who, who ever wants to be around an angry dad? None of my kids. None of my kids. None of my friends. My wife loves it, but other than that. No, no who wants to be? What, what do we do? We avoid an angry person. Am I, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? I know that I don't want to represent God. God is not angry. Why? There's nothing to be angry about. Why? Because everything that could keep us away from him has been satisfied. When he looks at you, he looks at you through his son. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah, what about me? My, my behaviors? They've been paid for. What's that do? Well, then if I have access to my dad, guess what happens? The more I spend time with my dad, guess who I become like? I become like my dad. And I just, I'm just, I just, we, I got, I'm getting this concept. Not only, see, I, I, 
I have never been motivated by anything that's angry, yet I think that anger motivates people. But everything that my father has invited me into, I've become powerful in. Everything that my father has loved me through, I've become an overcomer in. But every time I sense the accuser of the brethren, guess what I do? I rebel. <laughs> this is really weird. Sometimes I think God is my accuser. Can I tell you, that when, when you think that way, have another thought, because that's not true. God's not looking at you and waiting for you to fall. God is looking at you and waiting for you, for, for you to have the, the victory manifested in your life. He is. And we've got to get this, see, because what we're blaming God for is actually the enemy. When I start to feel condemnation, it's not coming from him. When I start to feel that guilt and I start to feel overwhelmed and I'm overwhelmed with my sin, what does, he, what does my father do? He overwhelms me with his love. He overwhelms me with his kindness. He overwhelms me with his joy. I, I just, you know, we give ourselves more credit than we give God. I would never come in with Ariel if she's having a bad day. Dad, I best I did this. I, no, yeah, well, you're that kind of girl. And what is wrong with you? What are you? I wouldn't start yelling at her. I wouldn't start being. I just like, hey, come here, baby. You're all, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, like I'm better than God. Yeah, we'll put God in this place. He's waiting for us to fall, waiting for us to fail. Waiting. And I'm like, I got, we got to get this mindset completely changed so we actually can represent him in the earth the way he deserves to be represented so we can have a whole culture start to be changed because they're not looking, we're not looking at what's wrong with them. We're looking at who they are. And we start bringing them up and say, come on in. It's warm in here. Come on inside. It's great in here. Sit down and have something to eat. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm tired. <laughs> when he gets angry at us, it's never a reaction to our sin. It's always a response that aids us in our development. I asked him, I said, so God, what's the goal? What's really the goal? He said, Scott, I want you to, I want you to be righteous. I go, well, what's that mean? You know, I could have looked it up and, you know, all the different things I could have looked it up in. I just said, you tell me. What, what a... So he did. I wrote it down. He said, he goes, I want you to begin, Scott. This might work for you. He said, I want you to begin to have a lifestyle of thinking, speaking, doing, and living in such a way that you appropriately represent me. Oh, so you want me to live that way and talk that way and think that way and see that way and hear that way? And he said, yeah. I said, so what does that look like? And so he, he took me. Anybody ever get married? Okay. Anybody want to get married? Okay, this is a passage for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. God is love. Everybody agree with me? God is love, right? Would everybody agree? Let me start there. God is love. So here it says love suffers long and is kind. Uh, verse 4, 13, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not, it's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Doesn't leave the service when his dad's preaching. Does not rejoice in, 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 in iniquity. Franny, please tell him when he goes, okay. Uh, does not rejoice in iniquity. He's probably chasing those bad guys, you know. Um, they're not really bad guys. They're just under the wrong influence. Anyways, um, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. All right, ready? Let's do this. You guys want to know who God is? Let's do it. God suffers long, and God is kind. God does not envy. God does not parade itself, himself. God is not puffed up. God does not behave rudely. God does not seek his own way. God is not provoked. God, God does not think evil. God does not rejoice in your iniquity. God rejoices in the truth. God bears all things. God believes all things. God hopes all things. God endures all things. God never fails. Now, yeah, what else God like? God suffers long and God is kind. God loves not, does not love envy. God does not pray to suffer. See, God, you see, because God is love. Am I right? He's not, he doesn't have the nature of love or the character of love. God is love. You don't even know love unless you know God. You can't even give love unless you know God who gives you love so you can take that love and give it away to somebody else. I just, I fell out of love with you. I fell out of love. I fell out of love. I fell out of God with you. I fell out of God with you. I don't God you anymore. Isn't that stupid? I mean, no, that's stupid. Isn't that Disney World? Really, when you think about it? 
Ari, that's Ari, if you don't know that joke, Ari told me I can't say stupid in church, but I can say Disney World in church. So that's it's like, yeah. So let's do this. In Ephesians, it says that we are to be imitators of God. If you're going to imitate somebody, it probably ought to be God, right? Yes? Okay. How, so if God is love and we're sons and daughters of God, and we're supposed to be like God, let's do this. Ready? You say this with me, but you say your name, not mine. Scott suffers long, and Scott is kind. Scott does not envy. Scott does not parade himself around. Scott is not puffed up, at least not as much anymore. Scott does not behave rudely. Scott does not seek his own. Scott is not provoked. Scott doesn't think evil. Scott does not rejoice in the iniquity of somebody else. Scott, does, Scott rejoices in the truth. Scott bears all things. Scott believes all things. Scott hopes all things. Scott endures all things. Scott never fails. Can that be your testimony? Can that be my testimony? It can't. Every single time that I'm, I'm acting like my father, that's true about me. Every time I'm acting like the father of lies, it's not true about me. My question is today, whose side are we going to be on? If you think God's on your side, you're wrong. He doesn't come for, you, for him to be on your side. He invites you to come and be on his side. I don't, he does, I don't build my life so he fits into my schedule. I build my life around his schedule. Yes? I want to look like my daddy. I want to talk like my daddy. I want to think like my daddy. I want to see like my daddy. I want to act like my daddy. I want to, I want to, t- I want to help people. I want to love people. I want to be kind to people. And there's only two people you're going to be like, him or the enemy of him. You're either being like him or you're not. When you're not being like him, that's anti him, and that means you're being like him. The other him, the little H him. Let's go over to Hebrews 12. I don't know how much time I got. I'm all done. I can't go to Hebrews 12. Can I go to Hebrews 12 real quick? Just real quick? All those burgers are probably going to burn and everything. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Now let's go on. Let's go on down. I'll, I'll just, yeah, we'll just do 12. We'll finish up with this. Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, you know I, I, can I tell you a lie real quick? I've thought too many times, or I've waited too many times for God to have his way in my life. Anybody ever do that? I'm just waiting on God. And in fact, we spiritualize that. Well, I'm just waiting on God. Just waiting on God. You know what he says in this passage? He says, Scott, lay aside everything. Who? Who's supposed to lay it aside? I am. Scott, lay aside those thoughts. Lay aside those distractions. Lay aside those good things that aren't God. Lay aside, lay aside your anger. Lay aside those impurities. Lay aside all those, all those things that are so easily besetting you. Lay them aside. And then another passage of Scripture says, put on the full armor of God. Who is supposed to put on the full armor of God? Who is? We're supposed to do that. See, a lot of times we think, you know, well, God finished his work and that we don't have to do anything. Can I just tell you something? His work is finished. Ours is just beginning. We're running a race. We're, we're, we're evaluating ourselves every day, see if we're still qualified for this thing that we're running for. We're, we have to kill that old man every single day. I have, to, I have to take every thought captive. I have to look at every situation and say, Father, let me answer this, respond in the, to this situation the way that you would. I, every conversation I have, I give accountable for, I am gonna give an account for every idle word that I speak. Not now. Not now. There's a day of judgment coming where it will happen. Right now we live in Grace. Thank God we don't have to pay the price for those words right now. But there's consequences and all that kind of stuff. We're not being being judged by it. But can I just tell you something? We've got to start awakening to the fact, to the fact, I think Alden started the service early this morning with saying this, that, that our words, our actions, our lives are powerful. We're not not, we're not not powerful people. But we've got to decide how are we going to be powerful? Are we going to be powerful 
representing him or we're gonna be powerful representing anti him. And I think in our culture, we've done a really good job of misrepresenting him, but I think he's calling his bride to look more like, act more like, talk more like, think more like our bridegroom. So in 1 Timothy, the last passage, it says this. First Timothy, it, I think it's in there. No? There it is. Yeah, 116. It says, however, for this reason I obtain mercy. And, I, and, 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 and the next phrase is what I want to emphasize. That in me first, Jesus... I had this long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him. I, I think a lot of times we're trying to fix other people. We're trying to fix culture. We're trying to fix our surroundings. We're trying to fix our church. We're trying to fix our marriage. We're trying to fix our children. And what he's really, I think he's saying to the church is, let me begin in you first. Let me change that heart of yours. Let me change how you see. Let me change how you feel. Let me change how you hear. Let me renew your mind to be the spirit of Christ. Let me change the way that you, your perception is. Let me change the way that you feel. Let me, let me cha change your priorities. Let me change your convictions. Let me change what's really important to you. Let me change what you love. Let me change what you hate. Let's come into alignment in such a way that men, that when people look at us, it's almost we disappear because they see such the beauty of Christ in us. What if that would happen? What if that could happen? I just want to tell you, not only can it, it should, and it will, to a person that submits himself to Christ. The Bible says in James, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And what happens? He has to go. But I want to tell you something. A lot of us are doing an awful lot of resistance without much submission. And you don't get the authority that you have in your life until you submit to the one who has all authority. And you, and you yield to the one who's been given all authority. Because everything else in the earth and everything else in heaven has no authority. Only he has all authority. And when you submit to that authority, you gain that authority and release that authority. The devil has to go. You don't have to be tormented anymore. You don't have to have sins. Or for, they can be forgiven, and, and you can be completely healed if you'll just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. But it's got to begin with you. It's got to begin with me. We actually got to become believers in Jesus' name. Can we stand together? Put your hands on your heart and just say this. Jesus, let it begin with me. Today, let it begin with me most precious name in heaven and on earth in the name of Jesus Dave's going to come and give us some instructions we're going to worship one more time just listen just listen real quick wow pastor that's just a great word man I, I wrote down um, lifestyle of speaking thinking doing and living in a way that appropriately represents the father and I, I just um, I love it that we have a senior pastor that does that you know we sing this song show me your glory and there's another way we could sing that song let us show them his glory and we've got a senior pastor that by his heart wants to show us his capital H glory we're going to open up the altars at the prayer team please come forward and, and there's a couple of things we'd like to stand with you we're going to worship um, have a great time um, together I, you know we want to start off by just saying thank you we love the family we love worshiping with you and, and just being uh, in unity uh, before him I love the line that says um, I will talk to my brothers about God my father and together we'll sing his praises so um, you know if you want to if you want prayer um, if you want to stand just have someone just to stand with you and just say hey father you know we want I want to represent you well um, we want to come up and pray with you if you have a specific prayer request um, as you know we're a praying people and I know you are too come on up man we'll stand with you we'll pray as brothers and sisters we'll talk about God our father and together we'll sing his praises um, Let's do that. You're dismissed. The service is dismissed, but let's just hang out in his presence a little bit longer and, and just uh, love on each other and love on him.
Yeah, I just feel like we need to really strike on uh, the point that Pastor Scott was making this morning. He talked, he's talking about anger. And um, the Bible talks about outbursts of anger, that that's a work of the flesh. And and if anybody in here, like I, I used to have like hideous problem with that. And I would go to his, I would go get before him over and over and over again until he really renewed my mind about why I did that, why I lashed out the way that I did. And he just, he gave me truth and it just displaced the lie. So I stopped, it just stopped. And so I just want to say to you guys this morning that like, if that's something that you've had a struggle with in your life, that you have, you, you, you have occasional outbursts of anger, that's a work of the flesh. And the word, the word says that if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's that simple that like we're supposed to crucify the flesh and the lusts of it. So your flesh wants to have outbursts of anger, okay? But this is the thing. We're not flesh. We're born again of the Spirit. And so I just want to, like, if you have this issue, then I feel like just come up here and say, hey, Lord, I'm crucifying my flesh and its lusts, and I, I'm just denying that its power, and I'm going to move in your power. I'm going to live and walk by your Spirit. So the Spirit, because when you, when you walk in the Spirit, the flesh doesn't get to have rule. It doesn't reign. It doesn't decide. It doesn't get angry. It doesn't, uh, you know, your, your spirit man's like, when that thing starts to bubble up, your spirit man's like, uh uh that's not who I am and you have you have this this um, better way of managing and a better way of 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 actually dealing with situations it doesn't mean you don't deal with stuff you deal with it but you deal with it in Christ and you deal with it in love and you actually cause change instead of like just repeated behavior you get me anybody out there <laughs> okay, so like, this is like, if you have outbursts of anger, if you've had a tendency toward that, like, come up here, please be prayed for because this is, it's not kingdom activity. And man, don't we want to walk in this kingdom life? I sure do. It's worth it. I mean, you'll be so free if you just let it go. As we sing, come up or go out. <laughs> you are a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. 